There are apps to locate your way around, make culinary recommendations, and even your soulmate. Consider an app that would enable you to enjoy your sexual activity to the fullest potential. In this way, the Polish comedy series Sexify introduces a taboo subject to the general public. It recounts the exploits of three young ladies as they create an app that emphasizes female gratification. While the first season established a foundation and gave us interesting insights into the characters, the second season dives deeper into the development of the app and the company's ups and downs. If you have binged the series with utmost enthusiasm and want to dissect the details of the ending of Sexify Season 2, then you're in luck because we have everything you need. Spoilers ahead. The main characters appear to be moving along in life well, as this season begins after encountering some obstacles in Season 1. Despite being unable to have sex, Adam and Natalia remain content together. Monica is content being alone herself and is concentrating on her company. Paulina, in contrast, is embarking on a voyage of exploration and self-discovery. She is training to become a graphic designer by studying design. They get ready for the huge app launch celebration. The launch party, however, comes to an abrupt end when the girls learn of their growing debt. They race to find choices that will enable them to maintain their business. At the last second, like a miracle sent from heaven, a female tech mogul in Poland named Malgorzata Debska shows up to their rescue. She offers to become a minority investor and help them get back on their feet. Better than having to give up the app altogether, the girls decide to take up Debska on her offer. The girls get the money, and the app seems back on track. Although, they have another challenge ahead. Debska conditions her money on the girls' plan of making an app for men's pleasure as well. The process of gathering information necessary to develop an algorithm for the men's app is begun by Natalia, Paulina, and Monica. Men are difficult to talk to about their sexual needs and issues. Out of embarrassment and shame, the majority of males lie in the questionnaires. Even if the majority of men experience the same thing, they don't want to appear weak in front of their peers. Max Alexiak, a representative of Debska's team, visits the Sexify office to keep an eye on the company's operations. Being the CEO and having Max override her decisions irks Monica. The challenges of the company are intertwined with the personal issues of the three main characters. Paulina manages the turmoil in her parents' marriage, while Natalia struggles with Adam's impotence. Additionally, Monica is forced to live on the corporate grounds after losing her home. They then labor harder and more intently in the hopes that at least something will work out. Paulina begins going on impromptu dates in order to learn more about men and their sexual habits as a result. She explores her urges and challenges her sexuality in the process. The girls come upon Sexagai, an app similar to Sexify but for males, just as life starts to look too good to be true. They discover that the developers of the software are Rayful and Gress from their university. The girls promptly put an end to their plans and invite them to collaborate on their app. Sexagai can also assist Sexify in obtaining the data needed for their software. Jabba and Dr. Kranicki are added to the team by Natalia to aid with the application's programming. To have a deeper understanding of the subject at hand, they even consult sex experts. Things get even worse for Sexify when focus groups and men in general dislike their app. They don't see any need or value addition by the application in their lives. The girls get dismayed by this reaction and lose hope. Ultimately, as Debska sees no progress on the other app, she fires Natalia, Paulina, and Monica. Debska dismantles the whole company and takes the app for herself. The subsequent endeavors of the real app owners to get it back are revealed in the climax of the show. What happens to the Sexify app? Rayful discovers how great and effective the updated Sexagai app is after using it during a sexual session. He informs the females of the good news through text message right away. Rayful, the girls, Jabba, and Dr. Kranicki, who make up the core staff of Sexify, then band together to battle Debska's malign takeover of their business and application. Natalia updates parts of the app's programming and adds a soulmate function that enables users to discover a spouse that is best suitable with them sexually. To encourage individuals to download and utilize the app, Paulina and Dr. Kranicki distributed flyers. Monica makes a cunning move by asking young juvenile, a well-known singer, to give a show for the general public. 
This draws in a variety of young adults and tempts them to download the app in exchange for going to see young juvenile perform. The concept is successful and they quickly have a sizable user base. At the Warsaw Web Summit, Natalia and Paulina take control of the projector as Debska announces the launch of Sexify and Sexagai. They reveal the truth and declare to show the world the real Sexify apps. The crowd cheers them on from the basement of the summit building which is the concert's location. The attendees of the summit see the youth using and loving Sexify apps. Moreover, they see Debska for who she truly is. When stubborn Debska refuses to cooperate with the real owners of the Sexify app, Natalia and Paulina are forced to take drastic measures. With a heavy heart, Natalia erases the app from its servers and all data related to it. Natalia disposes of her entire life's work in order to keep the app from falling into the wrong hands. In the midst of this turbulent commercial conflict, her ethics and ideals stand out clearly. Debska is revealed to be a shark who just considers feeding herself, contrary to what the girls' perceptions of her. With their cutting-edge app, Natalia, Paulina, and Monica work incredibly hard to support women all around the world and improve the world. They make such a difficult step away from their goals in retaliation. Debska, meanwhile, only concentrates on app downloads and success metrics. She has little interest in enhancing female pleasure or helping the users. The girls make a tough choice and delete the application altogether to prevent Debska from launching a fake app for the public. How does Marek save the girls? The drastic measure taken by Natalia and Paulina at the moment causes legal damages and a lot of debt for the company. Debska is infuriated and threatens to sue them, drowning them in more debt. At the last second, Monica helps her friends out by getting her father's help. Marek Noika is a well-known businessman with a lot of resources at his disposal. He is a worthy opponent to Debska, rather than three young girls who are just starting their own business. Debska's attempts to remove Natalia, Paulina, and Monica from Sexify are opposed by Marek. He mentions how the legal dispute will continue for a very long time before the app or its success does. Marek is accompanied by a team of accomplished attorneys who will stop at nothing to protect their boss's daughter. Debska accepts that she is in serious difficulty and decides to move on. Marek even convinces her to refrain from accusing Natalia and Paulina of deleting the app. In retrospect, none of this would have occurred if Monica had initially agreed to accept Marek's assistance. Nevertheless, Marek's business gains from the gap in the market even as Debska's reputation suffers. Why does Debska invest in Sexify? Malgorzata Debska is a successful businesswoman in Poland's technological industry. She didn't get to the top of success by giving young people control and funding little businesses. It is therefore reasonable to question her covert goals as she solicits the girls' investments in Sexify. It comes out that Debska is in contact with Vertigo Funding Group. Debska's investment in Sexify is actually made in order to obtain the private information that users will be required to provide. Debska also intends to receive a large sum of money from Vertigo in exchange for selling the data. Nobody is certain how Vertigo will use the data, but it seems impossible that it will be for the benefit of humanity. Natalia, Paulina, and Monica misjudge Debska and come to regret their decision to let her come on board. Debska turns out to be just like so many other entrepreneurs who only focus on profits and nothing else. When we consider the wider picture, we can see how this accurately captures the current state of technology and data-based businesses.